I was contacted about a month ago by a woman who was diagnosed with severe cervical dysplasia or CIN3, which was on the outer part of her cervix, the ectocervix, as well as the endocervical canal. So, you know, that's a fairly severe case when you have it both on the outside of the cervix as well as in the canal. And that's always, the more severe it gets and the more areas that are involved, the more, you know, the more concerning it is. Now, in her case specifically, what was really concerning was the fact that she had had um, CIN3 since um, over a decade prior. So she had had it a really long time, and that, that gets to be a little bit more of a concern when, when something's been there that long. You know, there's always a chance that biopsies may be missing something. Um, so it gets to be a little bit more concern. And, and in her case, it had been there a long time. Long enough, in fact, that her doctor, despite objective evidence to the contrary, told her that there was a 50-50 chance that she already had invasive cervical cancer. So she had sent me, you know, she was out of state, so I didn't actually see her in person. We were corresponding via email. So she sent me her uh, most recent biopsy results, which were CIN3, and it was in the canal, and it was on the, the outer cervix. So her doctor really didn't have any objective basis for that. Now, the point of this video, I'm not doing this video to malign surgical procedures like the excisional procedures, which would be normally a leap and as well as a conization, um, but rather to, um, you know, rather to implore that whatever you end up doing, whether you have HPV, some degree of dysplasia, you want to investigate um, sufficient to the point that you're comfortable with your decision or as comfortable as what you can be. So this woman contacted me because she didn't want to do what was recommended, which was a cold knife conization, which is a more aggressive um, excision procedure. Now, her doctor wanted to do um, a cold knife conization because it had been there a long time. It was in the canal. It was on the outer cervix. And by doing a more aggressive surgical procedure, you have a larger piece of tissue. So cold knife conization takes out a pretty, pretty good sized piece of tissue. And then you can send that to the laboratory and they can do pathology and you can actually look under the microscope and you can assess a couple of different things. First of all, you know, what's there? Is it CIN3? Is it cancer? Is it not? And then whether you have clear margins on it, in other words, um, did the excisional procedure get rid of it all? So her doctor was really um, insistent upon her doing this um, cold knife conization. And, you know, this is something that, you know, we should be cautious of because when a doctor really believes you should do something and they think that maybe you're making a poor decision, because in this case, the woman didn't really you know, she was exploring other options, which was why she was contacting me. But when a doctor thinks that you're being silly or, you know, at best, maybe stupid at worst, but when a doctor really knows that, you know, he or she knows better than you what's right for you, sometimes they'll kind of um, stretch the truth a little bit. I don't want to say that they lie about things, um, but they'll mislead a little bit and they think that they're doing it in your best interest. So they'll mislead you in attempt to somewhat manipulate you into doing a procedure that they really think you need to do. Um, I, I'm not a big fan of that. I think that's, um, I've, I've seen and heard, I've been in practice for 25 years, so I've seen and heard a lot of instances of this and um, it's just, it's just not, um, you know, the part of the job of a doctor is to help you make a proper informed decision. That's what informed consent is. So informed consent is to tell you, you know, to the best of our understanding, what do you have, you know, how to treat it. Are there any other alternative treatments? What could be the potential side effects? I mean, you're supposed to, that's the whole point of informed consent is to, is to help a patient inform themselves about what the procedure is. But her doctor was in effect misleading because she said, you know, there was a 50-50 chance that it was already invasive cancer and yet the pathology and the biopsy didn't, didn't say that. So there was absolutely no basis to be saying that other than her concern, legitimate or not, that it had just been there for so long, you know, this severe dysplasia had been there for so long that, you know, maybe it was worse than what the biopsy. But the problem is with that thinking is 
you have to use whatever objective data you have at hand. She had a biopsy done. The biopsy showed CIN3, and you got to kind of run with that, and you got to kind of base your decisions on the information at hand, or at least um, the objective information you have at hand. So the long and the short of it is, you know, um, I probably would have, um, you know, treated her at that point had she wanted to go through it, but I didn't hear from her, and then it was probably, you know, a few weeks later she ended up contacting me, and she went through with the conization procedure. But what happened was the doctor had um, hit a larger artery um, during the, the surgical procedure and she started bleeding and they attempted to cauterize and in, in a second procedure, um, they couldn't get the bleeding to stop so they had to do an emergency radical hysterectomy. So, you know, that's a bummer. You know, she went in thinking she was gonna have just this conization procedure which is um, you know, relatively straightforward under most circumstances. And then she ended up leaving the hospital, um, you know, with no uterus. And um, the worst part about it is that the pathology that was done after, you know, after the cold knife and after the hysterectomy showed that there was no cancer there. It was CIN3, in fact, um, exactly what the biopsy said. So in other words, the doctor was wrong. You know, this, this her gynae that was telling her, you know, that it was a 50-50 chance that it was already invasive cancer. Wrong. Um, so medicine is not a perfect thing and you can't always know everything. It's, it's not black and white. It ends up being a lot of shades of gray sometimes and you have to kind of base decisions on information at hand. What I would suggest to you is um, you know, investigate, read, try to determine what's the best course of action for you and be comfortable with that decision. At the end of the day, what you really want to do is you want to do enough in research um, to be satisfied and to be comfortable with whatever decision you make in doing treatment. If you decide to do natural treatment, um, then be comfortable with that. And if you decide to do, you know, if you have CIN2 or CIN3, which is where you're going to end up, you know, where a LEAP or, or some other type of surgical procedure is going to be recommended, be comfortable with that. But know what the side effects are. Know what the potential um, problems that could arise with that because they absolutely happen. I've said it before and I'll say it again right now is most women tolerate LEAPs pretty well. Um, Conizations are a little more aggressive, so there's a little bit more side effects. But at the end of the day, most women still tolerate these procedures pretty well, but not always. And I've seen, um, I've seen some of the fallout and some of the some of the negative cases of, of of bad things that have happened after these procedures. So they do happen. And conversely, if you're going to do natural treatment. That's not perfect either. Um, there's always a possibility that if you're treating something more severe and you're trying to treat it naturally, I mean, natural treatment may not work either necessarily. Don't, don't ever expect in any scenario that it's gonna end up being perfect. Um, you have to look at the pros and the cons and, and make a decision. Also with regard to natural treatment, um, you know, there's a lot of, there's misinformation on the internet as well and I've seen in a number of different circumstances, not just with HPV and cervical dysplasia, but other types of tumors and masses and breast masses and things like that. But you're always gonna find information that is going to attempt to lead you in one direction or another. So there's information on the internet that would say, well, yeah, just take you know this supplement or, or make these changes and everything's gonna be fine. Um, you know, or you can treat your cancer doing some sort of natural therapy, and that may or may not be the case, um, because I've seen negative outcomes also in people that, you know, thought that they could treat more severe issues with natural medicine, and and it didn't work, and ended up costing them um, sometimes their life. So. Um, at the end of the day, you really just need to be comfortable. Do enough research to be comfortable with what you end up, you know, what you decide to do. If you found this video informative and you liked it, please share it and subscribe to my channel.